flatten ears to ground, curve shoulder into the hollow of bones of earth beneath you. You're listening to One Hour With, I'm Reagan, and today we're spending an hour with Paul McDermott, Doug Anthony All-Stars, Good News Week and everything in between, and he's already given us uh, One Hour With Jesus, uh, and now we're up to person number two, another very interesting choice. Who is it, Paul? Maria Sibella Merriam. Yeah. Uh, she She was an artist, a botanical artist, and I fell in love with her images many, many years ago when I was at art school. I, I didn't know um, uh, the person for a long time. I, I, for some reason, I thought Maria was a, a, a male name, um, but she just uh, the most exquisite uh, watercolours of, of butterflies and insects and, and plants and a really forensic eye for detail. And I think many people would know her work. They just wouldn't be aware of her name. Um, you sometimes see her work in... Uh, you know, the background shots in films, there was a crocodile that she, I think it's a crocodile, could be an alligator, um, that she, that she drew. And it's just absolutely exquisite, um, beautiful image. And I remember watching a film and I doubt anyone else would have known, uh, where the image was from, but it was, was one of Maria's and just extraordinary. And, uh, she in many ways pioneered, uh, a style of botanical illustration. So a very, um, so a very uh, uh, talented and uh, and skillful, skillful uh, woman. So if you could spend one hour with Maria Sibylla Merriam, what would you do? How would you spend it? Oh, I would just I would just sit behind her and watch her watch her paint and draw. I think it would just be idyllic. Uh, the amount of concentration that are in these images, the way that she she shapes a plant on the page, the way she captures the the, the veins of uh, the underside of a, a plant, or the intense scrutiny that she applies to the minutiae of, of an insect is just uh, it's just phenomenal. And there, there's something about them that are that just just speaks of the real an absolute love and an absolute. Uh, um, first for, for beauty and knowledge. Mm. You've chosen a song by the Handsome Family to go with Maria, um, a song called Flies, which has an obvious connection, obviously. Uh, is there something a little deeper for you about it? Yes, well, the the Handsome Family are, um, I think they're, just, they're, they're a duo uh, out of America. Mm-hmm. They do Americana sort of music. Um, I went through a stage of really loving the handsome family, but I haven't listened to them for a long time. But what really appealed to me about this uh, this album was that it's all all about insects. It's uh, every every track on the album is um, is dedicated to some sort of um, insect, and uh, I, I like it when 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 people put limitations on creation. That uh, that there's a you know, guiding principle that they they put down and say, well, this this album's going to be about this particular thing. Mm-hmm. Like a it's like a concept album, I suppose, in in a way. But the the links between the songs, um, apart from the aspect of uh, the insects, is, uh, is 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 very tenuous. Um, and this this song in particular, I, th- I think I believe, is about um, is about Custer, and the and. Um, and him being invaded by flies as he lays dead on the ground, which I just think is a, uh, again, an extraordinary, um, extraordinary jump uh, in regards to what to write a song about. The idea of uh, the, the great white hope um, of the frontier, Custer, this uh, golden-haired um, savage, really in many ways, uh, who is uh, attacking. Uh, the Indians, um, who meets his end at Custer's Last Stand, and to write a song about that, uh, about that, um, that golden-haired hope, just being feasted on by flies. I just think it's really, it's really quite beautiful. Yeah, it's very poetically beautiful and a lovely tune as well. Yeah, so this is um, the Handsome Family with flies from their album Wilderness.